Since the release of the first game in 2015, Life is Strange has enthralled and appalled gamers in equal measure with its mixture of hard-hitting stories and supernatural gameplay. Even discounting the spoopy magic, this series is unusual. Or strange, if you will, in the sense that its adventures tend not to take place in one big chunk, but rather in smaller episodes, hence why it's called an episodic game. You probably could have worked that out yourself, couldn't you? Life is Strange is often held up as an exemplar of this format. The gap between episodes allows writers to slowly develop characters and stories over time, and the shorter gameplay reduces the likeliness of player fatigue. It doesn't mean that you have to fork out every time they add new content, but as Billy Ray's daughter once sang, nobody's perfect. But what if you've caught the episodic adventure bug and clamour for a world outside of Max Caulfield and Alex Chen? Well, I may not be telepathic, but I think I can say with some confidence that you'll enjoy these titles too. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 episodic video games that aren't Life is Strange. Number 10. Tell Me Why Released smack bang in the middle of the end of the world, Tell Me Why is the work of French developer Don't Nod Entertainment. If that sounds familiar, it's because these are the people who brought you the first two Life is Strange games. The pedigree here is Tresbian. This game follows the story of twins Tyler and Alison Ronan as they reconnect following the death of their mother after a decade apart. Oh, and they can also communicate telepathically, because a Don't Nod game without supernatural powers would be like a James Bond movie without the cars, martini, and casual misogyny. Tell Me Why released in three weekly installments in August and September of 2020. Whilst it was criticised for its gameplay by some players, as it garnered praise for its voice acting, setting, and complex characters, particularly that of Tyler Ronan, who was the first transgender character to star in a AAA title. So, if you don't want to stray too far from Life is Strange, but still want to brag to your friends that you tried something new, then tell me why might just be the game for you. Number 9. Resident Evil Revelations 2 Taking place between the event of Resi's 5 and 6, Resident Evil Revelations 2 also serves as a sequel to Resident Evil Revelations 1. Did I really need to say that? Do I have to do all the work for you? God, I'm not paid enough, honestly. The game's four episodes were released weekly between February and March 2012. The story follows Claire Redfield, back as the lead focus of a Resi game for the first time in over five years, as she and Barry Burton's daughter Moira team up to escape a monster-infested island. Despite being labelled campy by some critics, others praised the game's use of its protagonists and its engaging plot. One publication even named it the ninth most memorable game for the Xbox One. Would tell you what the other eight games were, but ironically, we've forgotten them. If you're looking for your spooky fix in episodic form, then you could do far worse than Revelations 2. And apparently, it's based on the work of Franz Kafka, so you can score some intellectual points whilst gutting zombies left, right, and centre. That isn't a dream come true, I don't know what is. Number 8. American McGee's Grimm If you couldn't already tell by the fact that his first name is actually American, designer American McGee has had quite the life. Raised by an eccentric mother who abandoned him at the age of 16, McGee is famous for his dark, twisted takes on traditional stories, no doubt influenced by his troubled upbringing. Oh, and he helped design Quake, but that wasn't episodic, so it's basically worthless. In 2008, the designer released American McGee's Grimm, a 23-part, multi-seasoned reimagining of various Brothers Grimm fairy tales. The stories ranged from Snow White, Pinocchio, and the Golden Goose, to The Singing Bone, Godfather Death, and The Girl Without Hands. Bedtime classics, one and all. Each season of Grimm was released like that of a TV show. Episodes were available to play for free on day of release and could then be paid for any time after that. In total, three seasons of the game were put out between 2008 and 2009. Grimm didn't blow critics away, but the sheer scale of it combined with its dedication to the episodic format is what earns it a place on this list. Also, have you seen the main character? We were way too scared of him to leave him off. Jesus. Number 7. Sam and Max Save the World Ah, oh, Telltale Games, the undisputed masters of the episodic format, until they went bust. But now they're back, so let's pretend none of that nasty bankruptcy business ever happened. Got it? Telltale made a name for themselves by taking popular films and TV shows and turning them into enthralling interactive stories. 
Jurassic Park, Game of Thrones, Back to the Future, and even Wallace and Gromit have all received the telltale treatment over the years, but not every franchise they adapted was a globally recognizable brand. Arguably, the studio's first success came with the release of Sam and Max Save the World in 2006. This wasn't the first episodic game they made, that was Bone Out from Boneville, but, well, I find that far too disturbing to talk about for longer than 10 seconds, to be frank. Sam and Max combines the fun of a New Yorky noir setting with all the charm and wit of the original comic plus that patented telltale feel. The six episodes scored between 74 and 82% on Metacritic. Not the best reviewed telltale game by any means, but don't worry, we'll get to that. Number 6. King's Quest Fans of 80s adventure games will no doubt be familiar with the King's Quest series. Debuting in 1984, King's Quest Quest for the Crown took the gaming world by storm with its enhanced graphics and stellar design courtesy of the legendary Roberta Williams. It's no surprise then that it's been revived more times than Loki in the MCU. Its most recent rebirth, also confusingly titled King's Quest, dropped in 2015 and was an episodic game. Gosh, what are the chances? King's Quest open brackets 2015 closed brackets sees an older version of the original game's hero, Sir Graham, telling his granddaughter about his adventures through a series of flashbacks. The gameplay differs from King's Quest's original point-and-click style, but the story harkens back to the earlier title and even includes updated versions of the other game's events. With five chapters to play and plenty of nostalgia mixed in with the new stuff, if you enjoy your episodic games with a hint of medieval about them, then King's Quest will surely give you a night to remember. Okay, I hold my hands up here. I stole that gag from one of the episode titles. Sorry. Number 5. The Last Door Sadly, not a simulation game about working in an understocked home improvement store, The Last Door was a series of psychological horror games published and developed by The Game Kitchen. The Last Door was born via Kickstarter, with donations to one episode earning backers access to future ones. It was a successful model that produced two seasons of four episodes each before the game finally wrapped up after almost three years. The game is still available online and was even ported to the PlayStation 4 and Switch, because who wouldn't want to see those stellar graphics on a plasma screen? Screen. Whoa, look at those pixels. Uh, sorry, where was I? Sexy squares to one side. The Last Door is a great little title for those who like their games tense and intriguing. Now, show me more of those pixels. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Look at them. Number four. Tales of Monkey Island. It's Telltale Games again. Appearing for the second, but not final time, in this list, Telltale Games took on the mammoth task of resurrecting the beloved Monkey Island franchise in 2009. Almost a decade had passed since the previous installment of the iconic puzzle series, but Telltale wasn't afraid to try something different, spreading one long narrative across five episodes released throughout 2009. Despite its differences, Telltale's version remained faithful to the original Monkey Island games by bringing in much of the cast and crew involved with them. It was like a rock band reforming, but with pirates and monkeys instead of divorces and bad tattoos. Tales of Monkey Island proved to be a huge success with its engaging puzzle design and strong characters. The game's popularity opened the door for Telltale to work with more established licenses. Licenses we will get to in just a moment. We won't say which ones, but let's just say you'll be dead happy with our choice. Oh, aren't we such teasers? You'll never guess. Number 3. The Lost Legends of Redwall it's a bit of a, to quote Peter Austin, wildcard entry with emphasis on the wild part as this game is all about adorable woodland animals with massive swords. Oh? Question mark? It's crazy to think that Brian Jack's acclaimed children's book series Redwall has only had one video game adaptation in the 35 plus years it's been around, and it was a blooming faff to get made. The Lost Legends of Redwall got stuck in development hell for six years, changing names and platforms multiple times until the first episode, entitled The Scout, was finally released for PC and Mac in September 2018. The Scout was followed by a second episode, Escape the Gloomer, a few months later, and then, well, nothing. There hasn't been a third episode yet, despite developer Soma Games revealing details about future entries in the season. Considering the years it took to get this project off the ground, it's perhaps not surprising that progress has stalled. Still, with no confirmation that the project has been cancelled, and with the released games getting mostly positive reviews on Steam, we're choosing to remain optimistic and hope that these fluffy creatures aren't dead, they're just sleeping. Promise. Number 2. The Journey Down in 2010, Swedish studio Sky Goblin released a freeware game called The Journey Down Over the Edge. Two years later, they decided to make some kroner off their idea, and the commercial version of The Journey Down was born. Split into three chapters, Over the Edge, Into the Mist, and uh, Chapter 3, The Journey Down follows brothers Buana and Kito as they journey into the much-fabled Underland 
which sounds like a dodgy theme park your school takes you to. It's another point-and-click title, only this one is advertised as having African roots, as shown in the game's art style, music, and broader themes. Despite waiting two years in between the first two chapters, fans of The Journey Down were still keen to raise nearly $50,000 of crowdfunded money to help Sky Goblin put out the final chapter in 2017, after yet another two-year wait. Still, fans got what they wanted with the final episode, and the studio must have been thrilled with the 80% Metacritic rating, which was also the series' critical high point. A strong end for a game that, rather fittingly, had been on one hell of a journey. Number 1. Telltale's The Walking Dead series is it predictable to give the top spot to a Telltale game? Especially this Telltale game? Yes, it is. But you know what? Sometimes things are predictable for a reason. The beauty of Telltale games is their immersion, their ability to take you out of your chair and place you right into whichever world you wish to inhabit. There are few worlds as harrowing and thought-provoking as that of The Walking Dead. The studio's first take on Robert Kirkman's zombie apocalypse was released over five episodes in 2012. What followed was wild success, and it won several outlets Game of the Year awards, which led to four more seasons of The Walking Dead, spanning seven years of releases. Praised for its strong characters, nail-biting plot, and the impact of players' choices on the game, The Walking Dead is considered by many as one of the best video games ever, episodic or otherwise. Whether playing as Lee, Clementine, or Michonne, it feels like you truly own the experience of playing this game, which, considering some of the things it makes you do, isn't always a good thing. If you haven't played The Walking Dead yet, then now is definitely the time. You don't even have to wait for the episodes to release, as they're all available in one big bundle, which sort of defeats the point of them being episodic in the first place, actually, but oh well, better luck next time.